So you finally get Resolve downloaded. The huge check mark appears on your screen and it's good to go. So you click on the little icon. It starts bouncing, you're impatient, nervous, excited, and are quite glad for a change from your old editor that you've been using for a long time. You open it up and start gaping at your monitor. Suddenly, all the thoughts start rushing through your head. Oh boy, what kind of timeline is that? There's fusion? What is that, like atomic? A whole page dedicated to just coloring stuff in. I wonder what I'm gonna have for dinner. But one seems to be the loudest. This looks too hard, let's just quit. I think you should go back to iMovie. And quite frankly, you shouldn't. This is why. DaVinci Resolve is a super powerful tool to use for video creation. It's absolutely astounding in any video situation. Whether drama, I'm sorry. <sighs> We have to break up. What? Action. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Comedy. <laughs> or YouTube. It has the tools to do it. But sometimes the learning curve can be too much for young creators and they can give up. So to help you guys with this learning process and take your skills to the next level faster, I'm going to be showing you one of the factors that sent my video creation sky high. And I warn you not to be arrogant when hearing this because I was at first. I heard this being said to me over and over again. And what happened was really sad. Due to my slowness and my lack of passion for my video projects over a lengthy period of editing, I had lots of incomplete projects projects, and they were all sitting on my hard drive collecting dust. But that's where keyboard customization comes along. With that, let's jump into the tutorial. Alright guys, so the first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to go and grab some media to use for video. Huh, look at that. We are going to actually use that for later though, because if we try to bring one of these guys into the timeline, we have to go up to the blade tool, and we have to click on that, and then we have to go down and click, and then go back up to the selection tool, and then click, and then we can delete the selected, we left click again, delete again. I mean, that's so much trouble. Why can't we just do it all in one take, you know? That's exactly what we're gonna learn how to do here. We are going to go up to DaVinci Resolve, then go down to Keyboard Customization. This is where you can find all of the keyboard shortcuts that DaVinci Resolve has for you. If we go up to top right-hand corner, there's a drop-down menu that you can click. DaVinci Resolve has these built-in mapped keyboard shortcuts. So it has the default for DaVinci Resolve, it has the default for Premiere Pro, for Final Cut, for Pro Tools, for Avid Media Composer, whatever. So I'm going to select the default just to show you what DaVinci Resolve has for its keyboard shortcuts. We can go up to the right and search Blade. And we see that Blade tool was mapped to the key B. If we go and save that, so all my keyboard shortcuts are mapped to the DaVinci Resolve default now. And close that, drag our clip in. And then instead of going up here and pressing the tab, we can press B and that will automatically switch it here. And then we can go down and cut how we want to. Quick little tip for you guys, go over to the selection tool, you hover over it, it'll give you the command for you. So if we just press the key A, it'll highlight this orange, orangey red, it'll highlight this orange and then you can select stuff again without having it cutting. Pretty easy, right? So you guys might be saying right now, wow, that's great. I can use shortcuts and stuff. But what about all these crunchy shortcuts? One of my favorite keyboard shortcuts to use is ripple delete, either to the right or to the left, which basically deletes everything that your playhead is at, everything to the right or to the left. Let me show you what I mean. If we type in N to playhead, we can see ripple comes up and this is the keyboard shortcut for end to playhead we see it's shift command right bracket that deletes everything from the playhead on to the next cut and same thing if we want to do the opposite shift command left bracket. But one thing I found out that makes you super efficient when editing is keeping one hand on the mouse at all times and your other hand on your keyboard at all times. You want to minimize as much movement as possible. So the keyboard shortcut I use when mapping end to playhead or start to playhead in my preset is alt D. Now why alt D might you ask? Well I also have start to playhead as alt A. I also have my razor selected to S right here. So you can either use Command B, like how DaVinci Resolve is using it, or you can use S. If I save that and close it, I can now use my presets. Press S for the razor tool, and then I can press Alt A for left of the playhead, and Alt D for the right. 
This allows for a super efficient editing workflow. To map some of your own, go to Keyboard Customization, go to DaVinci Resolve, then select the shortcut which you want to modify. If you want to modify the Razor tool, you see it is mapped to Command B, which is totally fine. So you can go to the right of Command B and press the plus button. Then you simply select the key that you want to use. Now S is already assigned to trim slash toggle slip slash slide mode. That's a mouthful, but you can assign it anyways. Now, if we go up to toggle, slip slash slide mode. I rarely use this function, by the way. We can use a new preset for this one. X that one out, then select Shift Alt S, and that will do the same thing. Then we can save it as a new preset. Go to the right and press Save as new preset. Now I can press S and cut anywhere I want very efficiently. Well guys, if you guys are getting a lot of value out of this video, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I hope you guys learned a lot today about DaVinci Resolve and editing and how fast and efficient you can actually be in DaVinci Resolve. I know it is a huge learning curve guys. I did it myself and you can too. Just stick with it and don't give up. And if you keep practicing, you will get better. I'll see you guys in the next one.